previously on Balls. Hi, Kirsten. Hi, hi. Hi, how they welcome to Balls Radio. Thanks for taking some time out to chat to us. Thanks, Kirsten. Wonderful. Return yes, from yes. Zurich. Yes, certainly. All right, now, how did it, I mean, how did it go there? Obviously, uh, it was, it was, or well, there were a couple of issues around uh, South African football that I think are, are most concerning to you. Uh, the two that we obviously want to chat about, first of all, the match fixing, and the other one is uh, fans getting onto the field during games still, which is not uh, sending a good message overseas. Certainly, I think a uh, great concern for us, the uh, lack of respect for the game from the spectator part of it. Mm. Well, I mean, is there a standard sort of censure that you tell all the teams, look, if you don't look after your fans, because sometimes it's difficult to say whose fans they are, but generally, is it the responsibility of the home team? Or is it the responsibility, I mean, is it easy to identify who the fan belongs to? And in that case, can teams expect a minimum censure for any of their fans doing what this guy did in that particular game? Look, I think uh, we always advise teams to uh, ensure that their fans are educated and that's why you have the various branches uh, because they embark on uh, spectator education. Of course, uh, the responsibility of security on the ground uh, where the game is taking place, obviously the home team comes in and come in and make sure that that is uh, visible and, and of course able to carry out its task. Yeah, because some people are saying dock points and stuff like that. But you know, when you start getting into into areas where you can affect how league league titles are are, uh, are finalised and who wins a league or doesn't, and someone's had points docked because of a fan, I mean, uh, you know, it opens it up for uh, fans from other clubs to try and uh, con the system. In other words, beat the system. You don't know, particularly if it might be, say, a Pirates fan that's dressed up as a Chiefs fan that runs on the field purely to get the team docked points. So you can't really take it that far, can you? Look, uh, um, fortunate at this point in time, uh, it hasn't gone to that level yeah. back home. Uh, they simply find. But surely, if you really need to uh, send a, a strong warning on that, it might get to that level. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, it's basically an issue of security for somebody to go through uh, 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 the cordon area into the field. Yeah. Uh, while security is watching, uh, it, 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 to me, it's unacceptable. Yeah. Absolutely. And have you had a chance to speak to the uh, the relevant security uh, or, or, or authorities there to make sure that this doesn't happen? And if so, I mean, do they bring in new security or is it just a case of making sure they, they catch a wake-up? Look, uh, the uh, PSL uh, or the NSL uh, PSL as our special member is responsible for that. We will certainly ask for reports to check as to what is being done. But uh, the truth of it is that they should never. Uh, go through uh, that area into the pitch mm. without somebody picking him up. All right. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, and we've had, uh, it's not the, it's not an isolated incident. There have been one or two other uh, pretty nasty ones. As we know, it is a small handful that make that ruin it for, you know, the other tens of thousands that actually just want to go and support football. So it's, it's a pity, but unfortunately they exist, and it's not only here, they exist all over the world. So it, it's something that we hope we can sort out. On the other side of the coin, uh, with the, where do we stand now as far as the, uh, the whole match-fixing uh, allegations go and, and, and what is the process from now? What happened in Zurich and where do we go to from here? Well, at this point in time, I think uh, the uh, process is now with the uh, uh, government. The uh, government will take that through. Uh, obviously, the Minister of Sport and his team will now begin to uh, make presentation. And as you know, it has to go through Parliament and ultimately uh, the uh, state president will then sanction for the process to go through uh, should they uh, deem it wise in that fashion. Okay, so it's in government hands and then at the end of the whole process, they then got to go back and report to FIFA or are FIFA actually involved in the process with government? Uh, in terms of the accord, there's an understanding that uh, FIFA's uh, chair of ethics uh, should be part of the process to try and facilitate uh, for this process to run smoothly. Okay. And do we know, I mean, what's, you know, once this process has ended, uh, did they indicate that what kind of censure there might be, uh, you know, if, if all these allegations are found to be true, what could happen? I mean, did they, did they indicate sort of further than just the process? 
Look, uh, um, nothing has been indicated as to what kind of such and rule would, could possibly take place. But uh, at this point in time, what we know is uh, uh, surely if uh, people are found to have uh, uh, gone uh, beyond the side of the law, the law will take its course. Uh, if it means people should be arrested, that should happen. If it means people should be suspended or banned, that's going to happen. And, and that's where we are at this point in time. Of course, the fortunate part of it in this instance uh, um, there's an individual or this company outside mm. our own uh, country that has been doing that for gambling purposes and, and it didn't affect our players in, in whatever way so it, 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 it then wouldn't affect that side mm. however uh, that process will be uh, looked into one uh, if there were people who were engaged in terms of uh, benefiting out of it surely the law will take its course so we're talking in terms of maybe possible sanction from a a FIFA point of view, but also criminal uh, criminal sanction as well, uh, as as in terms of I mean that is basically highly illegal. So we could look at it from both sides then. Surely, but to us the emphasis will be um, if anybody benefited out of this uh, whole issue, if anybody got involved on this issue intentionally, uh, steps will be taken. All right. Kirsten, we thank you for your time uh, this afternoon. Thanks for joining us on Balls Visual Radio this afternoon. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll catch up again sometime in the future. Obviously, it's going to be a, a quite a lengthy process uh, to go through. So thank you for your time today. Thanks, Kirsten. Wonderful, and thanks to you and your listeners. Thank you very much. Cheers, Kirsten. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go. It's going to be a messy, messy process. Yeah. 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 Basically... Uh, investigating the pre-2010 World Cup. Yeah, uh, they're talking the about the friendly international matches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, what went down there. But again, mm. is it, does it involve players? Does it involve any members of t- uh, team? Or is it purely uh, the guys who organise the games and referees? You know, where is it? And uh, what, are, what have FIFA got? And what do they want out of it? And what's going to come out of the, uh, the government investigation? And as we say, a long, messy process which uh, get to the bottom of it. Not good for our football. And then in light of that, on top of that, we've got some idiot that runs on the field with a vuvuzela and clubs a referee because he doesn't like a decision he made. If, uh, if, that, if, if, if that was allowed in sports, I mean, we would literally sit with these instances every single... Can you imagine what Super Rugby would have been like last weekend <laughs> and the weekend before? Sure. Referees would have been under siege. But you know, making you, stupid calls. You know, I know that uh, they, they do point fingers at security, but it's sometimes it, people it happens so quickly that it's almost impossible for someone to catch it if somebody runs on there. Moat. 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 That's what I say. Get a moat. Is that like a, a taser? No. no like it's it's uh, like, a, like around a castle. Yes, John, moat. give all the players tasers. In fact, everyone that comes into the stadium... They just taser each other. Search them for tasers. If they don't have one, give them one. <laughs> a moat. You reckon that's... There's a moat around the field, yeah, so like a castle, there. you know, yeah. ah, clever, with a drawbridge. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. let us explain. This is Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate, and John. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African Time. Balls.co.za.